Peace to all, and welcome to another episode of Elevate the Mic, and I'm your host, Max Mupese. Today, I'm sitting next to a guest who has a lot of years of experience working behind the scenes and in front of the camera in the music business. He's not only a sound engineer, sound designer, audio, he works also audio and video post-production, and a co-founder of a production company. Let us all welcome Real D. How you feeling, man? Good, man. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Hey, it's always an honor. Trust me, eh? Yeah. So what's what's been going on in your mind these days? Like, how do you feel in these days when it comes down to just life in general and uh, your personal your personal your personal success? That's a good question. We have to avoid as much as possible the negative elements in the media industry, such as YouTube mm -hmm. sometimes, Facebook. Uh, we get distracted a lot. So mm -hmm. I make sure that I stay focused on my projects. And, you know, always keep motivating the unmotivated individuals mm. in the social media realm, such as TikTok, Instagram. So people got to be very, how can I say, alert mm -hmm. on these uh, social media platforms because it can be good or for bad. Mm. So my vigilance is at a high rank right now. Mm. And I'm, I want to make sure to create positive content mm. so that the new generation go after their dreams. That's, that's good. That's good. When you mm. say in positive content, you also want to let people know not to get too distracted and mm -hmm. tap into other sources of energy that's what you're trying to say exactly? yes exactly because okay. they have a lot of good information nowadays before you know back in the 90s we didn't have that much control like whatever on the media is is what it is so for example there's bad news mm -hmm. well you got to implement the bad news in your subconscious mm -hmm. then what happens afterwards you get depressed you get negative mm -hmm. and you wonder why mm -hmm. it's because the media can push the agenda so you can be fearful all the time mm -hmm. but nowadays with youtube you choose what you want to watch right so if you want to watch about consciousness and the mind which is thank god for that mm -hmm. you'll be more you know kind of wake waking up You'll be like, oh, okay, this is what the person meant. Mm. So you'll be more aware of what you're doing in life mm -hmm. and, you know, how to make choices consciously rather doing it unconsciously, which can lead to disaster and trauma and drama because you made the wrong decisions. Mm, I like that because what I get from what you're saying is being in control of your, your own life, being in control of what you tune into. Right. That's something that I always like to remind myself is... What you tune into is what you turn into. So you got to be wary of that's how, a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, you got to be wary of what you you consume and what you what you ingest or digest. You know what right. I mean? Right. Now, real D. That's mm -hmm. the artist name, right? Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention your recording artist. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us the meaning behind real D? Because I understood it's uh it stands for real deep in spirituality. Right. Could you elaborate a little bit more on it? Real deep in spirituality. That's what it really means, my name, because when I write my lyrics or when I speak as a person, mm -hmm. people notice that I'm spiritual, very conscious. Mm -hmm. um, back in the days with my friends in college, they're like, yo, this is real D, man. This guy is spiritual, yeah, all about the consciousness. And, you know, sometimes they say, preach, preach. Right. <laughs> so when they needed some help on motivation, mm -hmm. they just go to me and they were very honored by, by my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that comes from my father's side. My father is very known in the knowledge realm, uh, the Quran, but he goes always beyond. Mm. So this is why I got it from my mother, the same thing. So mm. we're very spiritual people. Mm. I come from the Islamic background, but I'm not religious. That okay. was kind of my decision. Mm. I decided to tune into the Merkaba, mm. which is an ancient meditation from Egypt. And mm. that's what I got in tune to it. Mm. And then my spirituality went to the next level. Okay, interesting. So what I understand is that Islam was the foundation, yes. and it helped you out. Yeah, it helped me. When I was a childhood, yes. And during my childhood, mm -hmm. it helped me out to be disciplined and all that. Mm -hmm. But when I got into my teen years and young adult years, mm -hmm. I decided to say, you know what, nah, let me do what I want to do. What okay. makes me feel good. It's very important not to impose religion on people yes. because, you know, they will feel trapped and might maybe even aggressive. Mm -hmm. So give them the freedom of choice. If they mm -hmm. want to be Christian, Catholics, mm -hmm. if they want to pray to stone, they feel good. Mm -hmm. Let them do it. As long as they're good people, they don't hurt people, they don't mm. judge. Mm. You know, they say in the scripts that does, you know, when you judge someone for no reason, mm. you get punished by nature. Mm. It's what goes around comes around. That's it. Just spark a little a little bit of truth or a little bit of knowledge and That's see how, they, how right. they react to it. You gotta test things out. Perfect. Absolutely. Could you tell us about uh, your upbringing? If I'm not mistaken, you have your you're from Sudan, Sudan background. right. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us, were you born in Canada, Montreal, or how, how was it even growing up in, in the environment you grew up in? It's a miraculous story. I was born in a house. Okay. So no hospitals, no nothing. <laughs> and my when my home mom... Birth. Yeah, at home birth, yeah. Okay. When my mother delivered uh, the birth, it was fantastic. The house transformed. 
Uh, they got wealthy for some reason. And okay. my parents told me, you're the only child. Like, my brother and sister was like normal. They were normal birth. But me, it was miracles after miracles. And, mm. <laughs> so this, and then my father's like, you know what? I, I believe my our son here is going to do something very big in the future. We don't know what it is. but mm. So they, that's how we're very spiritual like that. Okay. So when we see those signs, we believe in them. And it's just a matter of time when we see the miracle in front of our face. Okay. And were you born in Montreal? or I was in... born in Sudan. Sudan? I was okay. born in Sudan, close to the Nile. Got mm -hmm. it. Got it. Nile River. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, that's where right. I'm from. That's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And... What was the transition or how was it from how was it for you for, to leave Sudan and come to Canada? Did you did you experience anything that was uh, life changing at that point? Or were you were you able to adapt quick? In, in other words, that's a good question. Well, it was a question of freedom and, edu and education. Mm -hmm. My mother, she's a mother. She's a woman who can, you know, analyze things and do the right moves with my father, of course, because he has the capital, mm -hmm. but my mother has the strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's a teamwork thing. And uh, an, an officer told, or an immigrant officer said, if you want the best education for your child, you got to go to Canada mm -hmm. because it's not expensive, it's not like the US or Europe. So it's a good start for your children. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you'll have a bright future. It's going to be everything easy. So can Canadians, they're always welcoming, you know, yes. like they, they, if you can't bring value mm -hmm. to the society in Canada, why not, you know, mm -hmm. and free health care on top of that. Yes. So that's why my mom said, OK, we're going to start in Canada. And from there, you know, I have good education, um, colleges, ele elementary schools, mm -hmm. very disciplined, organized. And yeah, that's it's good. really good. It's really good. Shout out to your parents for that. Yeah, man, shout out to moms and dads, man. Shout hey, out, yeah. Sometimes we, we don't even realize the smallest decisions can make the biggest impact in our lives. Right, you know correct. I mean? Absolutely agree. Could you tell us also about, because what I understand is that you got influenced by Wu-Tang at an early age, right? Yes. Could you tell us about your early inspirations in hip-hop and how did that come about? Uh, that was back in the days, I believe in the 90s. Uh, my childhood friend, shout out to Polo, Palin, a.k.a. Palin. And uh, we were watching hip-hop. We he was very heavy into hip-hop. Mm. So he introduced us to Wu-Tang, Protect Your Neck. Mm. And Rizzo was rapping with his hood. And I'm like, yo, who's that guy? Mm -hmm. Polo was like, yo, that's Rizzo. That's the boss of the Wu-Tang Clan. He's the guy who's the lead, who leads the clan. Man. I was like, man, it was crazy. The dark beat. And you see in their eyes, like, it's now or never, do or die. It's like, you don't like us? Well, we'll keep going. <laughs> That's what I like with the Reza. You can see him in the early days, like, it's this or we die. Like, mm. And that's what brought me to hip hop and also uh, music plus mm. uh, with Malik Shahid. Right. This guy hosted Malik. a lot of celebrities. He mm. the, one of my favorites was one with, with the Reza. Mm. So he hosted celebrities. That gave me a lot of a push in my early years. Mm. And I saw, wow, Malik Shahid is actually, you know, he pushing the boundaries. He's not shy to, you know, interview celebrities. Right. And they gave me a lot of influence. Mm. So, you know, Keras One, Wu Tang, Nas, Mob Deep, Rest in Paradise, Prodigy. Yes. He's my favorite artist. Mm. Shout out to Steve Sola, mm -hmm. the sound engineer of Mob Deep and Nas. But he was very heavy with Mob Deep, especially Murder Music Record. Mm. I thought I, I even uh, gave him a shout out. I say, oh, thank you, Steve Sola, for you know, producing and mixing the record of Mob Deep. That changed their lives. He saved, you know, gangsters' lives from the streets. Right. So people don't understand that. Like New York, some of them were in the gangs, so mm. they, they saved the money, mm. they invested towards music, mm. and then they made history and they feed their family. That's, That's the it. whole point of hip-hop. Hey, sometimes we don't even know the importance of a sound engineer or right. a sound designer. Mm -hmm. those, small, those small details. I was just working uh, last week at um, a block party in... I was paying attention to how the sound engineers were working. Yes. Everything makes everything is important to a point where if ever the sound engineer is stressed, then it's going to affect the DJ yes. and the host. So like everything has to be aligned in in its proper manner. And I also want to touch on the point of alignment because you touched on why Wu-Tang influenced you. Big time. And I also get the impression that everything aligned with spirituality because Wu Tang also has this spiritual effect mm. when they make their music. Right. Would you say that when you started listening to RZA, you you tapped in a lot more into like the creative spiritual side of your of your music, or that came later? Uh, it's it's in that element, okay. but also he's a lyrical producer. Yes. So that really motivated me. I'm say, I said to myself, you know what, let me, let me try this out and see. So I took some of his elements when it comes down to beats, mm -hmm. mixing, gathering artists, 
and you know just rap and just let yourself out and it's a phenomenal experience for me as a producer as a rap artist and I want to show to the entertainment industry that you don't have to wear just one hat as an artist mm. if you have other talents open them even as an A&R mm. you know A&R they make sixty thousand dollars a year mm. thus and the, maybe that A&R is an artist he's right. a producer he, he could do a lot of things so people have to learn to open their versatility in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Music Technique, one of my, the managers who taught us the class, be versatile. Whatever mm -hmm. the door opens, just go, because you're inside the industry. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can patch out. That's it. Speaking of versatility, mm -hmm. you wear many hats. Yes. Recording artist, mm -hmm. you do also voice, voice yeah, yeah, over voice acting. Yeah, voice actor, yep. Voice acting, mm -hmm. uh, you, you write, mm -hmm. singer-songwriter. Right. Which one would you say gives you more light? or more life, should I say, when, when it comes down to making, make, creating art or even displaying? It has to be music, I'm mm. sorry. Like my recording studio is my best friend, it's my therapist. So whenever I'm going through a dark phase, mm. the studio is always there. Now mm. don't get me wrong, the other outlets are good. Like acting is good because I can t t express myself. Mm -hmm. But music and rap is the best Therapy is the best medicine. You can't find that in hospitals or psychologists, psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. They'll give you the medicine, yeah, all right, but if you don't know what's the problem, the root, mm -hmm. then it's gonna, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. It could be temporary relief. Mm -hmm. Even the doctor's gonna tell you that. <laughs> but if you don't know the source of the problem, mm -hmm. then it's not gonna be solved. Mm -hmm. So music and sound, this can be the solution because once you deliver your talent, mm -hmm. you're expressing yourself, you're learning yourself out. Mm -hmm. It can be negative, positive, whatever mm -hmm. you're feeling, it's very healthy, and as a result, your mental health will be on check. Right. It's also a form of journaling when you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. You could write your own, you write your song for yourself, or you could write for, you could write it for the pub, you could write it for the public. Right. However, writing it for yourself and knowing that you, you're secure enough to, to live with what you wrote mm -hmm. is going to help other people because you know that you wrote it for yourself and you're happy at the end of the day, right? Right. So would you say... Has, has there has there been an, a point in your career where you wrote a song and you did not regret whatsoever what you wrote, even if it came off kind of edgy? Because that, <laughs> that could happen sometimes, right? That's a phenomenal question. I had to cancel a song because of that. Okay. Because uh, I was with my ex fiance Now, I'm not going to tell her name. I'm not going to say her name on live. Mm -hmm. But I praised her so much. And it was a hit song. Like, it was a, it was a hit song. Mm. Uh, a guy from the Source magazine said, yo, that's hot. But then when we got to arguments and stuff like that, I was like, I had to take it out. Mm. So it kind of, it's kind of, because it was a hot beat. I rapped about her, you know. I told her, yo, we broke up, but I'm coming back to you. Mm. So, and then after that, she, were, she was a little bit arrogant. And it was a long-distance relationship, mind you, mm. in Mexico, L.A. Okay. So <laughs> it was a long-distance relationship. Right. But, you know, things didn't work out. So I was like, all right, you know, we, I got to walk away. She walks away. We got to do what's best for us. Mm. And that's, I took that song off the record just for my safety mm -hmm. just imagine i put that song there mm -hmm. it blows up mm -hmm. she'd be like where's my royalty where's my money at right she, she might come after me right, right. i mean i put oh. her name in there right, right. <laughs> so yeah. i have to be careful i put in the back burner it's a good memory but it was the the episode was so painful mm -hmm. that i'm like no nah, i'm gonna just put it in the classic mm -hmm. archive that's it hey good thing so that's, mm -hmm, that's what i got it man i mean good thing that you were able to think it through because sometimes yes. out of emotions you release the song and then you regret it later however you got to think it through exactly because i had hope on that you know it, it was my move to make things work together but mm. it just backfired so for my safety like i said i just put it on the side and that's it there's also another track called revenge mm. um and then i said one of the artists to jump in he's like i don't know man it's a bit controversial i'm sorry so that song that was like way back because i was mad you know like when you let your emotions out you're not right. thinking mm. but then afterwards you got to calm down and say okay cancel it it's an experience so it's it's not like you wasted the record but you know if it doesn't fit the project or it's mm. for your own safety then take it out that's it Mm -hmm. For your own safety. For your own safety. That's right. Because people will come after you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Especially when you blow up, jealousy will come. Mm -hmm. Old friends will come back. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, what's up? Uh, say, yo, sorry, my dude. Like, love is love, but I got a jet. See, that's what you got to mm -hmm. don't, don't insult them, but just say, yo, I got to grind. Got it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of grinding, mm -hmm. could you tell us what are some current habits that you've been developing that helps you improve your mindset and skill sets whenever it comes down to making music or your your creative endeavors self-discipline mm. 
So people can have all the talent they want, but if they don't discipline themselves or they, or they can't complete a project, it's because they're not self-disciplined. Mm -hmm. Now, some of my friends were very talented. Don't get me wrong. They, you know, they had everything, but were they dedicated really? Are they really to, you know, ready to put the work in and put the hours and the mix in? Networking, networking, mm -hmm. networking is your net worth. Mm. So if you don't know how to do that and you think, oh, it's just a hobby, it's, no, it's not, it's not a hobby. Like if the artist thinks it seriously, it's a, it's a career. Mm -hmm. So at least one year career dedication. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the artist can make his or her decision. Should I continue mm -hmm. or should I go into acting? Should I go into another field in the entertainment industry? Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll go back to singing and rapping. So mm -hmm. a lot of artists do that. El Cuche is a good example of that. Right. My brother met him on a set okay. down in LA. And he's, you know, El Cuche is a very humble person he's not arrogant some stars are uh, i met some of them right. they're a bit arrogant but el cool is very open he's like yo if, if you believe in yourself you go for it mm. white clef jean he met my brother mm. down in miami he saw the logo river now like yo man this can't go far you just gotta keep going that's it so it's all about self-discipline at the end of the day mm. and if you guys want to know what self-discipline is you got to go on youtube as the neuroscience of self-discipline mm. that's like four hours long so you can listen it bit by bit every day mm -hmm. but those were used by astronauts uh, top guns people athletes mm -hmm. so they repeat that uh, program mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they become very invincible okay is it some sort of mantra no no, no, no it's, it, it's, it, it's, like... it's a, like a lesson it's like teach it's, it's like sort of a tutorial but like on how to hack the mind okay and the repetition mm. and how to surpass even your idol sometimes mm. but not not in a arrogant way right. but you're gonna see that person mm -hmm. who's a star is not that special after all because it's all self-discipline right there are no more people like us mm -hmm. only the difference mm -hmm. is they practice their craft over and over again with the talent and mm -hmm. emotion i like that i like that i'm gonna ask you to share that info info at the yes, end of the yes. interview yes i'll, I'll tell you exactly where to go on youtube yeah. that's that's great i mean could you also talk about, because you have, you've worked with a lot of artists in the past. Mm -hmm. You are, you were also part of a group, right, if I'm not mistaken, in your early days? In my early days, yeah, Empire Crew. We're Empire like Crew. the next Wu-Tang in Montreal, but people were not ready for that. Okay. I was the only one who's, who survived, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where you also learned the lesson of everybody can go. Exactly, culture, right? exactly. But one of my childhood friends, Selwyn Belgrave, that's mm -hmm. the second time I'm going to mention him, <laughs> he's the guy who really believed in me. He was like, yo, keep going, man. Like, I believe one day you'll be on TV and should just keep going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it happened after some years. So it's very important not to forget the people who supported you from the gutter times. Got it. I'm glad that you mentioned his name, Selwyn, right? Selwyn Belgrave, yep, Selwyn yep. Selwyn Belgrave. He's, he's a family man now, but uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. could you tell us about, well, what did you learn about yourself working with Sel Selwyn, Selwyn and your brother? Uh, well, with Selwyn, it was mostly the rhyming, uh, the writing. And he told me, okay, I see you got some Wu-Tang influence, but do it this flow. He actually sounded like Prodigy from Mob Deep, so I used mm. to call him Prodigy. So that was an honor on his behalf. But then after that, my brother, you know, we were using a software called EJ. It's a free software. You know, it's barely nothing. We had nothing to do. And then my brother's like, yo, you got to step up your game. What you, what you doing? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yo, use Reason. So he went to a store, a music store down on close to our house. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he asked the guy who sells music, uh, what do you recommend for, for beats? Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, Reason. That's it. There's no further. Because Reason, it's an emulation of a recording studio, but in a digital format. Okay. So you got the patch bay, you got the... SSL mixer so it gives you the impression you're in the studio but digitally mm -hmm. and you know it's it's really good the sequence is tight it's really good when was this exactly was this before the new AI wave yes yeah, so wait, 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 wait. Okay. before like we had to really fit me and my brother and I we had to figure out how this reason works so we had to do trial and error trial and error mm -hmm. till we get the right uh, equation Mm -hmm. So we didn't we didn't go to school. That was before my music technique. Okay. So I had to really we had to learn it. We did beats. It wasn't that that tight. Well, it was good. It was good. It was reasonable. Mm -hmm. So I did a few projects with it, and then after that, when I went to music technique, then my brother then my brother told me mm -hmm. that you're gonna be very dangerous because now you have the knowledge of the sound. So imagine you make beats with it, mm -hmm. you'll surpass a lot of producers because you know what you're doing, and you know what the sound engineer wants. Mm -hmm. if, they, if, they, if, they, if they say I want this separate tracks you know multi-session like you all understand mm. but if you tell that to a producer who, is, who doesn't know the sound engineer then the sound engineer has to give him a little tutorial before mixing okay 
Now I get why they created AI to compete against guys like you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know. I mean AI is good. I, I'm an AI artist, by the way. Like okay. in the, you know, doing drawings. That that's really because it's very precise. But even in AI, you have to know what you're doing. Mm. You could, I can me, I can figure out bugs in art because I used to be a, a QA okay. for the video game industry. So our job Sorry. is yeah. Was a QA? You said uh, quality, uh, quality assurance, I believe. That's okay. that, that's what it means. So in the video game industry, so what we had to do is we have to find bugs. Mm. So when there's a glitch or the graphic or the animation is off we had to report it to the game developer mm. and then they fix it and then boom so then in the ai art i kind of use that because you, sometimes you're going to produce the ai project mm. but there's gonna be some mistakes mm. so you have to fix it and redo it again and then you have to train the ai mm, okay. before it becomes official even ai they could do uh your chat gpt I mean, chat, yes yes so it can correct your text it can yes, you, you can yes. do business plans but you have to know what you're doing as well mm. uh, there's some mistakes there is it too far so you got to know what you're doing. You could be the master of technology. That's good. Mm -hmm. But you, you got to know what you're doing. Got it. I get, I understand that you, you, you've developed a lot of skill sets. What are some advice would you tell anybody who's watching this right now, a 16-year-old, mm -hmm. unsure about mm -hmm. developing skill sets mm -hmm. and how to go about developing multiple skill sets without mm -hmm. wearing too many hats at the same time? They have to take a personality test. Mm -hmm. That's very important. I remember in high school, I took it. And I did not actually rely on it. I was like, no, I want to be electrical engineer because it <laughs> sounds good. You know, people want to do that. I want right, to be a doctor because right. it's, but no, you have to go after your passion. Do you love, do you love what you do or you're just doing it for the money and pay the bills? Mm. You can do that. Mm. There's a boss uh, in my video game industry. Well, no, sorry. In the video game industry, mm. he used to make, I think, $80,000. I think he was an engineer mm. for, for one year. He, he's like, man, I, I didn't like it. I'd rather be a supervisor yeah. in a video game industry in the QA department making less money, mm. but I'm happy. Mm. But the, the one they paid me good money, but I was miserable. So right. what are you going to choose, man? Right. Are you going to choose your mental health or are you going to choose the money? Stressing mental over, health. Right. Stressing over deadlines. Exactly. Sleeping, right. And the boss talking nonsense uh, on you, yeah. putting you down, your confidence is down, mm. and you have the choice. People, mm. they realize that I don't have a choice. No, yes, you do have a choice. Mm. If you want to leave, leave the leave the goddamn job before it, the room turns on fire. That's it. Start <laughs> messing shit up. Like, oh, damn, exactly. I, can't, I can't focus. Mm. I like that you said personality test because that's something that that's overlooked, right? Overlooked, absolutely. You know, it's, 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 it's basic, it's simple, and it's something that it, it goes back to self-development self -development and looking at your, your, your strengths and weaknesses or even strengths and other strengths you need to develop so what are some things that you were able to do in order to take that personality test like for instance invest in in like a program or is just like going online for the most it part? was in the school they okay. were like uh, I, I believe the counselor she went to our classroom and she stated that personality test is the roadmap to your career mm -hmm. and we were young we we're like 17 18 years old like 16 whatever mm -hmm. and she's like if you take that test this it's a map to your career mm -hmm. and i was like okay we we got to take it but we didn't take it seriously till mm -hmm. it hits us after oh man yeah it said um, I'm, I'm supposed to be this a teacher uh, an actor it says it says to me like one of the results was actor okay so now when i i got an internship under uda i can do this all day even since 14 hours mm -hmm. i'm getting free food i'm chilling knowing new people being you yourself know, be, being myself so why not do it as a living like it's a part-time living don't get me wrong as an actor you have to have other streams of income mm -hmm. my agent shout out to constantine a top talents agency he said make sure you experiment other streams of income don't just depend on acting because if you depend too much on it mm -hmm. and you don't get the auditions you'll be depressed unfortunately mm. that's the sad story but if you have other talents or other career paths you can take part-time flexible mm. while doing the auditions and then you'll be happy then you'll know what you want afterwards mm. so don't be afraid to change even sometimes careers for your own good mm. for your own good yeah mm -hmm. river nails Productions. river now productions yep that's our that, company that's the mm -hmm. name of the company right co-founder with your brother yes co-founder yeah he, he came up with the name Okay. Could now, you, before it was yes. Knocked Out Productions. Okay. But I was like, what the hell is that? That's whack. <laughs> so, so one of my friends from Ghana, his name is Gideon, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, be original, like something that reflects your identity. Mm -hmm. So my brother was pondering. He was like, yo, we're from Sudan, mm -hmm. the Nile. 
River Nile Productions, and he came up with the architect, the mic, and the Nile around the mic. So mm -hmm. he's the guy behind the logo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and then I had to confirm because I'm his partner. It's like, yo, that's good. Mm -hmm. Let's let's do that. And a lot of people liked it. Mm -hmm. I mean, our logo can be very competitive against the other label logos. I'm not being arrogant mm -hmm. here, but some uh, some label logos, I'm looking at, I'm like, it's all right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> River Nile Productions, like, whoa, what's that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us about? your most inspiring moment thus far as a co-founder or even working with your brother? Uh, I've accomplished mixtapes. So mm -hmm. I'm very proud of it, very independently. Uh, there's the Soul Savior, they're all on, they're on SoundCloud, Right to Live mixtape, Soul Savior mixtape. Uh, it taught me how to be independent, to learn independently as a sound engineer, music producer, always check reference music. Mm -hmm. So one of my engineer teachers, he said, guys, before you even record, mix, or do your thing, take a record that's already mastered, mm. put it in your computer and studio, study the sound, and then when you start mixing, recording, emulate that. Mm. And also, never stop learning. Mm. You know, people think after your school, you graduate, oh, that's it. Mm. No, it's not. You have mm. to do even more study than working. <laughs> Life is school. Yeah. Life. And Paul Paget asked me, he's one of my teachers, at Mr. Nick, he asked me, what do you want to do after you graduate when you finish? I want to go into hip hop. He said, mm. well, I got to go in a straight line. You can't just go, I don't know yet. I don't. And then, unfortunately, I had distractions, you know. Mm. But that, uh, then it was always on my subconscious mind that I want to be in the hip-hop industry and, and create something meaningful. Mm. And I, I kept visualizing it since I was like 18, 19 years old. So I started at 18, really in the hip-hop, but it took me several years. We went to Def Jam, we went to Bad Boys. Okay. <laughs> we tried to like all, but the security is like, do you have a meeting? Mm. And we're like, no, we just want to know. It's like, well, you're going to have to, sorry. Right. Three securities, Def Jams, like it's big. Shit. Yeah. Okay, mm. you learned a lot. Yes, Just doing the hustling, bustling right. before we'll the try. social media. Before days. the social media, that was all yeah. manual, envelope, CD. Shoot. They're like, we cannot accept that because you don't have a meeting with an A and R. Mm. Mm. And that's how you were able to build connections later on, if I'm not mistaken. It's oh. all, it was all through social media. Okay, because when you put the hashtags in Instagram, your rap, hip hop. And then sometimes the major labels or ARs they just want to scout. They want to see what's hot out there, mm. and that's their job. Artists and repertoire. Yes. So they want to make sure who's hot now. And sometimes the age has a factor because the younger the artist, they can, you know, get some money in three, four years. Mm. If it's like my age, 30, 39, 40, they'll be like, well, he can be independent. He can do his own stuff. So we don't have to push as much, mm. but you could do a partnership deal. Mm. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. He's right. a good example of partnership. He was in his 30s. Mm but he was not a slave to the label. Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, when I come in the label, I'm, I'm the boss too. Don't spit on my face like I'm a slave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yo, Nipsey, he doesn't care. Like, that's what I learned from him a lot. So mm -hmm. we, it's, it's a big loss, unfortunately, but I took his knowledge mm -hmm. and the partnerships. People don't understand that. Mm -hmm. It's really deep contract negotiations. Joint venture deals. Joint venture right. deals, yeah. Okay, got it. And you can have, you can have also your own capital mm. and then team up with the mayor. You say, look, I, got it. I can take care of this, you take care of that. You know, mm, so. That's good. <laughs> yeah. come, a, come off as a negotiator yes. instead of somebody who, who's asking, you know, with the handout. Exactly. All right. On on three different occasions, you almost lost your life. Mm -hmm. That was that was very, some serious stories. Could you tell us about uh, what, what those moments well could you tell us about those moments specifically and what did you learn about every single moment were you able to no could you tell us about those moments yeah. and what you learn about yourself throughout those moments that's mm. what I want life is very short okay and you know you have to thank god every day be always in a gratitude mode mm. so the first incident was in toronto i believe it was in the late 80s somewhere like that. i was very young and my parents and i and my brother we were just in a museum. I think it was like a spatial museum. So they were a bit dizzy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, we were at the park and uh, I saw a bird or a seagull, I don't remember. So I ran after that bird. Mm -hmm. And then I fell down in the Ontario Lake. Okay. And my mother panicked. She's like, where's my son? Then she saw my shirt floating on the surface of the lake. Mm -hmm. And she was screaming her lungs out. Like, that's it. My mm -hmm. son might, might, might die right there. Then all of a sudden, there was an Indian guy. Shout out to India. Mm. An Indian yeah, angel. Shout out to India. Shout out to India. I got, you <laughs> yeah. know, he's an Indian person. So he dived in and he saved my life. And it was an honor. And my mother thanked him so much. So wherever this guy is, I, I, I'm going to thank him all the time till, till my time comes out, you know. But uh, it was it was, it was was very, very, very dramatic. I mean, you could even, it's even a movie, you know. Like, it's really, really 
uh, crazy. She was her heart rate was at a high speed, mm -hmm. her heart pressure. But you know, she was so shocked. She was not supposed to be pregnant because when she did the operation, mm -hmm. the shock was so high that she got pregnant. Jeez. And <laughs> so That's that was like serious, a, almost a man. replacing soul. Okay. You never know. Maybe right. if I passed away, then my you know mm -hmm. my mom got my sister. And it's really unbelievable how these that these things happen. It happens so fast, like, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's one of the craziest uh, shocking moment. Okay. And then after that, when we came in Montreal, I think a month later or weeks later, I had a car accident. Okay. So I almost lost my life there. It was an intersection. It was green light. You know, when you pass, you have you have the right to pass. Yes. But then the intersection, the woman did not stop, so she mm. hit against the bike. My bike couldn't go and. Mm. She, I don't know why, she kept going, and then I flew up in the air. I lost a lot of blood, Damn. and my mother was shaking, and she's like, is, is, is he going to die now? Like, mm. and, um, and, you know, she kept praying. My, my father kept calming her down, mm. and, yeah, I, I was okay, you know, but I was, man, two months, summer, <laughs> as yeah. a kid. It's crazy, yeah, right? Man. It's it's like I see the kids playing outside, but I, I had a, you know, you know, plaster right here, mm. like, it's like, yo, I couldn't do nothing. But mm. but then when the school started in September, man, mind you, I, I, you know, I had the crutches, like, but I still, I still played ball. I still shot, yeah. you know, yeah. I didn't sit, sit, sit down being like sad, like, no. Mm. So I started shooting and it was, it was a, an amazing experience. And then I won VIPs, I won championships because mm. of that pain I had in the car accident. So I turned out into fuel. Mm. So you can use your pain, driver. right, yeah, it gives yeah, you the drive, yeah, yeah. and I just proved them wrong, and and I was one of the fastest guys, believe it or not. And I was okay. breathing through one nostril, because my, my other nostril was blocked by a bone. Oh, shoot. So I had to take my operation at 18 years, uh, yeah, when my idol is my 20s. Mm. So mind you, like, I recovered from a car accident, mm. I was breathing through one nostril, and I still won championship. Just imagine if my nostril was all open. That's a great I'll be right like, there. <laughs> yeah. That's great perseverance. Perseverance, and, passions, and also my last episode was depression. Unfortunately, uh, I, I went through a lot of anxiety, depression with my ex mm -hmm. fiance, the first one, and because you know she pushed me only for the money, do for the money, do. Right. Then I'm like, all right. So I was, I was young, mm -hmm. 19, 20, fresh. Mm -hmm. So I worked in a restaurant, dishwashing, whatever. I just wanted to prove that I could make money at a young age. Mm -hmm. But as a result. It was depressed. I, I shut down. I was zombie right. because I overworked. Mm -hmm. I wanted to prove her that I can make money. She was a teacher, mind you. So she got her things together. Right. I was just getting started. So right. that's a mistake, guys. When you go with a woman that is higher cal caliber than you yes. and you're going to overwork, overwork, over to mm -hmm. prove her. No it's, no, it's the wrong match. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I had a depression anxiety like maybe for like a year. So I was under supervision, but. Then I, you know, I had to reprogram my subconscious mm. mind, positive affirmation over and over again mm. till the negative thoughts eliminate. Mm. And then I got better. Then it's, it's all about your consciousness and go after what you're meant to do mm. and not for the money. Hey, that's powerful right there, man. You, you thinking about writing a book about your story or even... A you know what's funny? I have a short movie called Real D Mission. Hey, you plug that in. Yeah, if you have connections with uh, film industry people, I could shoot that sh um, uh, Real D Mission. So it's about a lyrical artist from Montreal. Okay. And he has big inspiration and dreams. But, you know, he has a lot of obstacles and, you know, injustice. Uh, he's getting rejected here and there. Mm -hmm. But he never stopped. And then New York people discovered him. Mm -hmm. They gave him a shot. Mm -hmm. And then he made history. Mm. So that's and it goes with the Promised Land album, so it's like a bundle deal. Mm, so there's great. an actual album behind yeah, the movie. Right, that's good. That's good. Man. That's a surprise element. You see, mm. they're like, "Oh, it's a movie." Where's the soundtrack? No, it's the album. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes maybe maybe with music videos in the movie. Mm. So I, I was shopping it around. I'm just trying to look who's the, who's the right person okay. for the investment. Investment, sorry. Okay. And what is a current what is a current quote that you live by? Mm. Uh, the, one of my favorites uh, quotes, uh, shout out to Les Brown, he said, it is better to be prepared for the opportunity mm. and not have one than having the opportunity and not being prepared. Mm. That's something we have to always keep it on a subconscious level because you never know when the opportunity comes. Mm. Now, I did not know I was going to be on, a, on an interview like this. Mm. You know, you told me, yo, man, well, I was like, oh, okay, it came to me, but I was doing a lot of work behind the scenes till it attracts. Mm. So that's the opportunity quote is very important. And also, Stephen, Dr. Stephen Greer, right. he said a quotation that I was like, man, if people know about this, yes. you're going to be like almost an elite. Mm. 
So he said, if you know how to use the power of your consciousness, you'll be able to change the direction mm. of the planet. Okay. So, so you see, the consciousness is <laughs> right. it's a secret element people don't know. They want to be conformers. They don't want to know the truth. Mm. That's why one out of 20 mm. will go after what they're meant to do. And maybe 19 out of 20, they'll, well, okay, we got to wake up, do work, and that's it. Mm. We got to feed our family. Yeah. That's it. But are you bringing value to the Right, the right. Like, are, you, are you willing to produce a history? Are you want to, you want to put a positive mark mm. to the new generation? So that, oh, man, look at this person. I want to be like that, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. How are you making a difference? How are you making a difference? So it doesn't matter what your field is, as long that's your identity. Mm -hmm. Then okay, if people want to talk nonsense, let them talk nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know your heart. Your heart and, and inner guts, those are your best friends. That's and they're 90% right. That's <laughs> it. The Promised Land album. Tell us about the, the title and the number of projects that you're currently working on other than the Promised Land well, album. Well, Promised Land is, is, is my main focus. I mean, there's going to be another EP mixtape. I'm still thinking about the title. I'm also making beats. So if artists want to join, whatever, I'm down to collaborate, beats, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's basically the main focus right now regarding uh, my projects. Yes. But Promised Land, right now, I want to break through a buzz. So I have like two singles out there. Real D7 God already knows. Mm -hmm. And there's a girl in China. Uh, her name is Mie. Okay. Mie? Mie? And she's promoting it. She's like, yo, look real deep, man. I was like, yo, I had the gift, you know, <laughs> bless the likes. I mean, that's that's an honor. And, you know, so that's like worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing with social media. People around the world are going to discover you. Mm -hmm. And my streams got a little bit high as well. So Congrats. that's great. So, I, yeah, thank you very much. So Seven God already knows. And uh, the other song, You Can't Bring Me Down. I was listening to that one. I like that one. The that beat. was based on a yeah, true story. The, that's the, that's that. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Really <do>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the singles. So we got to make sure there's a commercial appeal to it. Mm -hmm. I remember I was checking the a &R session and they're like, OK, well, a &Rs, they got to see if it's commercial or not. Mm -hmm. So sometimes Kamal Aman, he's from Jersey. Yes. And he gave a lesson on marketing. Mm -hmm. And if the a &R says, well, we got to go with that song, not your other song. We don't see it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. You got to listen to the a &Rs decision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might have a song that you really want to do. You want to do a video to it. But the A&R is like, no, man, I know you like it, but that song will hit the mark. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will blast. Billboards. And mm -hmm. sometimes the a are right. Even Drake, sometimes he does the music, but he's not the decision maker. Mm -hmm. There's the a and behind it, the producers, and then Drake has to listen what they have to say because mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they think the artist is the boss, but no, there's some guys behind the scenes. I like that you mentioned in the people behind the scenes mm -hmm. and specifically the a and The a and yeah. How... They, their, their say means a lot. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us, like, let's say somebody's watching this for the first time and saying, okay, Real D, I want to get an A&R. How do I get to an A&R or a booking agent? What are the steps you'd have you to gotta go You got to put your numbers up. Mm. You, your numbers have got to be high. Now, also, like, doing shows, whatever, but that's not enough because, you know, sometimes booking agents, booking agents, they look at the numbers a lot. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how you did it. Did you reach 100,000, a million? It doesn't matter. And then from there, and the social media, of course, if it's really high, mm. then the booking agent will try to, you know, book, book you. And also a &Rs can discover you because you're pushing it. Mm. You're pushing independently. You're not depending on them. They want to see what you can deliver by yourself, <laughs> not depend on a &Rs. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes a &Rs are seeking talent. Mm. But if you cannot bring anything on the table, what are they going to bring to you? They're going to bring nothing as well. Mm, that's <laughs> what a you good got? Point. They, they, always, they always say what you got, but mm. you have to be careful because sometimes they're shady. They got shady music managers. Mm -hmm. Usually, you don't have you don't pay the manager. They, they will give you whatever gig, and they get fifteen percent. Yeah, yeah, fifteen to twenty percent. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're like, "What's your budget?" I'm like, "Yo, I'm not paying you nothing." Right. You, exactly. <laughs> why, why? Why are you asking budget? Yo, give me the contract right. one year. You know what I'm saying? I got ripped off by, by one manager who did that to me because he promised me a lot of deals. Right. So I paid a fee. That was my mistake. I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. And then he did not deliver. So that was mm -hmm. so guys. Do not pay music managers. Let them, like, you know, see your talent. And then if they can find you gigs or opportunities, mm -hmm. then if there's a lot of budget and, like, there's money involved, mm -hmm. then they take 15%. You take the rest because you're the creator. Mm -hmm. But his job or her job is to find you gigs. That's to, it. That's, it's a lot of work. They have to network. They have to know important people, mm -hmm. get you to the right door, mm -hmm. negotiate the deal. And then the manager he protects the artist. It's mm -hmm. kind of normal. That's mm -hmm. it. Could you also talk about... Because you said um, you've worked with your brother. Mm -hmm. Also, Cell One was a, yeah, a big influence. Of, mm -hmm. Could you tell us about your 
history or even the a biggest the biggest lesson you've learned as an entrepreneur building your own business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is something that sticks out or that stands out every time you think about business in general it's the right team mm -hmm. and the trust element is very important uh, they get be a lot of trust issues some people will say they're down then they turn out on you mm -hmm. or you know attitude is very important mm -hmm. and you have to invest in yourself really and have the right team with you. Got that's it. In, that's in any businesses. So if you have two, three people that have the same vision, mm -hmm. then it can really blow. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure you know what you're doing, and you got to be passionate about your role in the in in, in the company. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you're not passionate about it, then it's not going to work. Mm. Mm. So everything starts with you know having a good team, yes. and being aligned with the passion. Align. Yes. Alignment is important. The same vision. Okay. Not being. Not competing with each other right. in the same company. Something can happen. Mm. But no, you, you know, we got to work together as a team mm. and then make history together mm -hmm. and create great memories. Mm -hmm. It seems like it takes a little bit of trial and error to yes. really realize, okay, you know, I'm, I'm part of this team. This team is part of me. Mm -hmm. and we can make this thing happen together. Exactly. Okay. And if you could talk, if you had a chance to talk to your 16-year-old self today, mm -hmm. what would be the first thing that would come to mind or the first thing that you'd tell that person? Uh, go for what you love doing. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to people's opinion. Don't jump into a love relationship too quickly mm -hmm. before you didn't figure out who you are. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I'm not against ladies. I'm not. Sometimes, you know, they can, you know, camouflage your identity mm -hmm. because you love her so much. Mm -hmm. She gave her money and everything. So you, you submit. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you're not going to be thinking, well, yo, I'm the man here. I got to be conscious about my mission. Right. And sometimes they can just shatter mm -hmm. your mission because you loved her so much mm -hmm. that you forgot who you are. Right. I'll tell you a story. There's a person, uh, I, don't, I don't remember from what source, but he was a baseball player, a very professional baseball player. Mm -hmm. And he had, a, I think, a million-dollar contract, the millions. Mm. But he said, I'm going to stay with my girlfriend. Right. And he stayed with her. Unfortunately, she broke up with him. Mm. Look at the regret there. Right. Let's see if he said, yo, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to eat anyways. Yeah. So either you ride with me or yeah. not. See, this yeah. is the mentality. Yeah. Men or women, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm yeah. not a sexist guy. But, like, yeah. if you have a certain passion, you go for it. We get yeah. the deal. Then you ride with me or not. We're going to mm. eat anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not so, something. Yeah, it's, 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 I've, I've <laughs> noticed that quite a few times. I also think whenever it comes down to relationships, I also mm. think there has to be this level of, a boundary or even this right. level of a priority right like you mentioned the mission the mission once the mission comes first then it's easier for everybody right you know everybody can understand that this is the mission right and it's going to make our relationship better exactly and make their team the the, the, the unit better right exactly. So exactly instead of having to like because i don't think in general humans like to be pedestal pedestalize that yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah you don't want to pedestalize a person mm -hmm. and having to work on something after you want to work on your your mission mm -hmm. and yeah. then you add and the then, person and that's right that's what i get from from relationship yes 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 now absolutely. Mm -hmm. could you tell us a few more questions left mm -hmm. uh what could we expect from your company in the next five years uh international level uh mm -hmm. towards the u.s market even japan because japan they said that's one of the top uh ranks yeah. when it comes to people don't know that Japan and I also, loves hip hop yeah music, exactly yeah. so it's going to be more in an international level so we're going to try to branch out everywhere uh east west and you know just getting noticed as a best well one of the top best sounds when it comes down to beats mm. and messages as well like mm. to inspire the uninspired to motivate the unmotivated mm. i got that from tyrese gibson okay so he's a motivator guy so yeah, it's, so basically our branding is going to be all about quality and deliver top products. Mm. That that that's basically our our branding. Yeah, love it, love it. Top mm. products. That's top important. products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. This is this is what I live by. Mm. You know, my life mentor he told me there's going to be a difference that someone who's doing it for a living mm. and someone who's doing it as a hobby. Two mm. different things there. An actor who really works almost 24 hours not the same thing as an actor who's going to just do it for fun. No, man. Mm. Tom Todorov, he's one of the top uh, coaches. Uh, he's been there twice. Mm. He's like, this is not for uh, actors, hobbyists here. Mm. If you want it as a hobby, you get out of the room. Shoot. I was like, Damn. straight up. Yeah, he's like, straight up. Get I was the like, fuck man, out. I, yeah, I was in the front class. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah, let's go hours. I don't care. <laughs> so not I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this is serious. Damn. So that, that's why River Not Production is my blood, sweat, and tears. I've been doing this for almost, a, almost 20 years. Mm. Uh, strong. 
So now people can see the experience in it. They're like, oh man, really I ain't playing. This guy, you can see right. that that's, that's his life. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, serious. <laughs> hey man, look into the future. What do you want people to know about you and what do you want to leave behind for the next generation? Well, I want to make sure to be remembered as a lyrical producer who can produce a positive impact mm. towards the new generation mm. through messages mm. that can make people feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, that not only that makes them dance, but it can help them in life, you know, because yes. I believe that positive messages, especially in rap music or any genre, can help people. Just imagine someone is about to commit suicide, but they hear something on the radio mm. that's positive. I just saved that soul's life. Yes. And, and that happened to me, I think twice, two friends of mine from back in the days, they're like, I don't know, man, I heard your stuff, but I feel good. I was like, well, that's great. That's more than a billion dollars. Mm. So, <laughs> so I, I, you know, yeah. that's what I'll be re remembered of as a lyrical producer who's a spiritual healer, but he goes through the music and he uses the hip hop source mm. and then make history and make people feel good and saves lives. Mm. It's a great weapon. But by the way, for the people who don't know, hip hop means highest infinite power healing our people. Mm. That's Professor Griff. Shout out to NYC. Could you highest, say that again? In, highest infinite power healing our people. That's hip hop. Not guns, drugs, and hoes. No, it's not that. Mm. It's unity, love, make a difference in society, and you know, build a positive community. That's hip hop, not gangster rap. Yeah, that's powerful. Last question. <laughs> yeah. When you hear elevate the mic, what comes to mind? Elevate the mic. Mm. You know, you, we gotta go in a in a sort of uh, elevation or to the next level or not to be afraid to show our talent what we got and go towards a high elevation in any dimension form. So that's what I want to say, elevate the mic. We're stepping up on the mic and we're going to show you what you got. You like it or you leave it. That's hey, what I, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what stuff, I see. Man, good mm -hmm. stuff. That's what I see. Could you tell us how, how could people follow you? How do viewers could stay in touch with Re you? Real D River Nile, yeah, that's my Instagram. And uh, you can reach me there, uh, www.rivernileprod.com, R-I-V-E-R-N-I-L-E-P-R-O-D.com, studio service at rivernileprod.com. You guys can reach me there, any projects you guys have in mind or whatever service you guys are looking for, I'm always ready. That's it. Staying ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's right. That's Love right. It. Always ready, man. A mm. real deal. It was a pleasure having you. It's, it's good to see. I was able to understand your story and mm -hmm. see all of the emotions that that went with it. Yes, it's it's honorable. You know, you, you're doing something that that's not gonna go unnoticed whatsoever. Thank you, man. And man, just keep on keeping on because there's greater things that are gonna keep happening. I'm pretty sure. All right, thank I'm you. Convinced <laughs> that you you got that you got that self belief and that that self determination that that you know that that is uh, that is out here. We could mm -hmm. see, we could sense it, man. Thank you, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Highly appreciated, man. Love. Again, it's an honor. Trust me. There you go for another episode of Elevate the Mic, where we elevate the mindset and skill sets of individuals who are part of the hip-hop community. Peace.